All right, and welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be looking at the Dofer A172 in kind of a different light for processing audio modules. Um, in the previous example, we were looking at the A172 specifically processing control voltages, that is low frequency audio. Um, and then prior to that, we did the basics video covering just the concepts about what this module does. Uh, so if you have any questions or, you know, this seems a little bit uh, too far out there for you, uh, just kind of jump back to the previous videos and uh, take a look at a couple of those and I'm sure it'll clear some stuff up. At any rate, let's go ahead and jump right into the demonstration that we're going to be doing this time. Um, what we're going to do is actually process two different VCOs right here in front of us. Um, we're basically going to create new waveforms um, that are going to be a product from this module. Uh, so first, let's see uh, what our standard waveforms are going to look like. So I'm going to need to switch my oscilloscope over here. Uh, if you can look over there, now I have a stacked mode going on. So at the top, I'm going to see one waveform. At the bottom, I'm going to see another. Uh, so I'm going to take this, my saw wave, from my A111, and I'm going to pipe it in right over here into my oscilloscope. So we should see uh, sort of a saw wave here in a moment. There we go. We actually hear it as well. Okay, now I'm going to take a second waveform over from my A110. There we go. And I'm going to pipe it into the bottom. So you can see that's a very different type waveform. And if I change the octave over here, you can see it a little bit better. So those are our two waveforms. And now if we go back to the center, we actually do a little bit of processing. Let me unpatch these. So you were hearing that drone there for a little bit. And now let's go in and pipe them into the maximum and minimum selector. So for this, we need a few shorter cables. I think I might be able to get by with those. So let me take the saw wave and then go into input number one. And I think I'm actually going to need a little bit of a longer cable. So I think I had a triangle wave. Hopefully that's what I had. And then we're going to go into input number two. And you can see there's some activity over here on our outputs, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to switch my oscilloscope into single mode. So I'm just kind of flying by these other modes. And then I'm going to take the, let's start out with the maximum first. And then we'll pipe that in to our oscilloscope and then see what kind of waveform we have now. So here we go. Fairly different than what we had before. So if we go back to center, we can see that this is just kind of a triangle wave uh, being sort of not combined, but compared in the maximum minimum selector. And then whatever the maximum uh, voltage is at any moment is being continuously output over here into our oscilloscope. And so that's what we're hearing right there. So in some ways it kind of looks like a triangle wave, but in some ways it kind of looks like a saw wave. So that's the maximum output there. Now let me take that out and let's take a look at the minimum. There you go. That's a little bit different, but sort of related to the previous one. Kind of see right there that kind of rhythmic cycling. Let me take that out. Let's compare it again to the previous one. So there is our maximum output at our oscilloscope. Let's go back to minimum. Okay, so you can see that the waveforms are different. Um, now, the kind of interesting thing about this is that you can output these simultaneously. So if you wanted to use both of these and then uh, put them into a mixer, or into a VCA and then adjust the level, you can kind of get your own timbre of waveform going on there. OK, 
Okay. Now, just for fun, let's go ahead and take um, our saw wave out. Now we're back to just the triangle wave, which you can see over at the oscilloscope. And let's just go sine wave into that. There we go. And again, we're looking at minimum this time. And you can hear sort of the timbre changed as well, because we lost some of those harmonics that were in our saw. So yet another interesting waveform. Let's take a look at the maximum output now over at our A172. There we go. That one's fairly interesting. Okay. So good example of those. Now let's go into, let's try, haven't tried this before, but let's go ahead and try it. Triangle and triangle from two different oscillators. Let's see what we get. Okay, that is fairly a different shape. It's almost like they're being superimposed on each other. You can kind of see in the in the little valleys there. Maybe the ridges are the one that's lower frequency. Okay, that's maximum output. Let's hear the minimum and see the minimum. So there we go. So that one's a little bit different. I like the little edges at the bottom, kind of like jagged kind of teeth uh, in the A172 processing that's happening. Cool. All right, now for this last one, I'm gonna just unpatch that. I need a slightly longer cable because I want to go pulse wave into triangle wave. So let's take pulse wave and then just take that right into input number one. So there we go. We're looking over there in our oscilloscope. You can see that's a very different shape. The little peaks there at the top. Now at this point, if I wanted to, I could go into my A111 and vary the pulse width, and I would see a change in my uh, oscilloscope view. Keep your eye on the oscilloscope. I'm going to just move the pulse width ever so slightly, maybe over here going in the clockwise direction. So I'm going to move it a little bit, and then keep your eye on the oscilloscope. There we go. And I'm just going to go all the way to the max. So there we have mostly triangle, but then we have those little jagged jumps there. I'm going to go in the opposite direction. So here I'm in about the center, like at about the five position on pulse width. And now I'm going to go in the other direction. So if I go counterclockwise, let's look at our waveform. And there we get something not quite as interesting as what we saw there in the center. I kind of like that sound there, kind of in the center. And I like the way that one looks, too. Cool. So now for the last example, I thought we would do something a little bit uh, more rich in harmonics. So I'm going to keep this pulse wave, and I'm going to actually unpatch from the A110. And I'm going to take the saw wave this time. Let's combine something with lots of harmonics. If I want to go to the extreme, I can maybe take the saw here in a moment. I'm going to play with my pulse width a little bit. Keep your eye on the oscilloscope. Very different waveform right there. Let's go in the opposite direction. And right about there is kind of a timbre I like. So now at this point, if I found something that I like, I can vary the octave to get different effects or different waveforms. Let's take a look. I'm going to switch A110. Uh, let's see, down one octave. You can see the waveform has changed now in our oscilloscope. I can bring that down one more octave. And yet another change occurs. And then I can bring that A111 down too. And we get a very slow rate going on over there, kind of droney. Might even actually be able to see that a little bit better if I maybe zoom out a little bit. Yeah, there we go.
And so you can kind of see in that oscilloscope view right there, um, it's sort of peaking just a little bit. You can almost see the edge sort of appear and then reappear, almost like it's growing, moving over from the from the right edge of the screen, going up, and then it kind of turns into kind of a pulse wave. So fairly interesting shape. Uh, not something you can necessarily create just right out of the box from uh, maybe pulse width modulation, cross modulation, um, or even, you know, just regular CV modulation up here. So the effects that you can achieve with this are very, very different from what we've seen in the past. Uh, things like the A114 ring mod um, gets you a slightly different type sound, but uh, the calculations inside of it are actually entirely different as well. Uh, we might do a little bit of a comparison later on, uh, just to kind of see what um, that kind of looks like and sounds like. And let's just wrap up by hearing the maximum out right there. Okay, so there's our waveform. And at this point, you know, sky's the limit. If you wanted to, you could go in and, you know, add additional processing. If you wanted to add a third waveform in here, maybe take the triangle wave, go into input number three, get even more different of a waveform over there. Uh, or if I wanted to take the sine wave from the A110, go into input number four, and just completely warp it. I have a very kind of subdued waveform there. And if I bring it up an octave, I could probably get some more visually appealing results. There we go. Maybe just the pulse with a little bit. You can see that right there. I'd be able to get some interesting effects a little bit later on in one of the future segments if we do a little bit of LFO modulation. Something to think about. At any rate, uh, that's going to wrap up this segment of the A172 series, uh, the maximum minimum selector uh, for processing pre rate modules. Um, I hope that you found this useful. Uh, kind of give you a little bit of an insight into this module. Uh, when I first kind of came across this module, um, I was kind of confused by what it actually did, and I thought, well, it's, it's fairly small. I was like, it doesn't really look like it has that many possibilities, but in fact, it actually gives you tons of possibilities. I'm even considering maybe getting a second one. Um, at any rate, please stay tuned for the next uh, segment in this series. Uh, what I have planned is we're going to combine uh, a little bit of both audio rate and LFO signals. So please stay tuned for that and keep on patching out there.